Caregiver, You Are Not Alone by Bobby Carducci, The Imperfect Caregiver, published by s &H Publishing. An anthology of caregiving stories, followed by an essay written by Bobby, reflecting on personal experiences and her feelings while caring for her father-in-law, Roger. Anne's story. Mom, open your eyes one more time, please. I've read that many people who are unresponsive can hear what we say to them. I hope it's true. It would be such a gift to have her awake one more time. I want to let her know I'm sorry for the times I was angry and resentful and taking care of her took over my life. There's a saying that a person with dementia isn't giving you a hard time. The person with dementia is having a hard time. Well, guess what? It's both. You were having a hard time and giving me one too. I tried to remember it was the disease talking when you called me a no good bitch or when you threw your dinner plate at me. What possessed you to hide your soiled underwear in your closet? I still can't figure that out. What were you saving it for? When the smell got bad, you accused me of poisoning your air. When I finally realized where it was coming from, I really lost it. I called you a crazy old bat. I'm sorry, Mom. I hope you know I would never steal from you. Your money is still in your bank account, every penny of it. I wish you could walk out of here and see that for yourself. The first time you accused me, I felt so betrayed. I don't want your money. I'd give you everything I have if it would help you get better. I don't want to remember you this way. Open your eyes, please. I'm praying for one more moment when I am your child and not your caregiver. I don't like where real life has taken us. I'll be your little girl again if that's the only way you will recognize me. We can play pretend and fill a little teapot with water and serve it in tiny cups. You can show me again how to take the crust off peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and cut them into quarters. We'll lift our pinky finger when we sip our tea and dab our mouth with paper napkins we decorated with crayons. I still have one of those napkins. Can you believe I saved it all these years? Where are you now, Mom? Are you absorbing all the mysteries of the universe? Are angels whispering to you about what's waiting for you on the other side? I hope that in this moment you are in a place that brings you joy. The imperfect caregiver says, reality, what is it good for? Get real, get your head out of the clouds, stop daydreaming and get to work. How many times in your life have you heard or said those words? I heard them a lot. I loved lying on my back in the field of sweet smelling grass as fluffy summer clouds turned into magical beings right before my eyes. Sometimes I'd spot a horse or an elephant. Once I saw an image of my math teacher reaching for a hot dog. I laughed so hard my sides hurt. As a writer, I know the value of pushing reality aside to explore a world of possibilities. As a caregiver, I found that letting go of reality sometimes opened a rare portal to communication. One of my favorite memories of my mother is when she and I took an amazing trip far from the real world and connected in a way I will always treasure. I'd come from Virginia hugging my suitcase and my fears to care for her. She was finally resting after a 24-hour marathon conversation with the universe, rambling on incoherently at times, speaking clearly at others. She took me on an unforgettable adventure of fantasy and memory. Wow, look at that, she said, her eyes wide with wonder. I see, I tell her. What is it? Uh-oh. What do I say now? What is it? She asked again, this time a fearful note in her voice. I don't know. What do you think it is? I answered. I think it's a bee. I hope it doesn't sting me. I won't let it get you. I'll swat it if it comes close again. Okay, she sighed, relieved to know that she was no longer in danger. Do you have to go on tonight? Go on. Go on what, I thought. I don't think so, I told her. I'll have to check my schedule. I never knew you could sing. When did you learn to sing like that? 
Sing? Me? No way, I laughed to myself. I'm the one they couldn't decide where to place in the second grade choir because the director couldn't figure out if I was an alto or a soprano. My voice is that bad. I was pleased that she gave me a talent I always wanted. I wondered if she could also make me a real blonde, fix it so I no longer have to spend hours at the hairdresser to look like my more beautiful sister. Sing to me. Sing me a song so I can rest. So I sang. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. The visiting nurse raised her eyebrows and covered her ears. I shrugged my shoulders in a what are you going to do attitude and continued singing. Mom relaxed in my arms. Sleep tight, I whispered, only to see her eyes pop open once again. Look, over there, she said, pointing. I see angels, three of them right over there. They have light all around them, but I don't see any wings. Yes, I see them, I placated her. They've come to watch over you as you sleep. Get some rest now. I began again. You are my sunshine. Oh, please, she rolled her eyes. Stop that racket if you expect me to get any sleep. Who do you think you are? Some lounge singer? Smiling, I watched as she drifted into sleep, thankful for the gift of song, even if we shared it, only for a little while. We were up and down all night long. I saw her chasing shooting stars, crying over a ruined party dress, livid with rage for some unknown man from her past. I saw the wonder in her eyes as she held her firstborn child, laughed as she went skinny dipping with my dad in the creek behind their first house. For a time she spoke a language no one else could define, growing frustrated at my lack of understanding until she looked at me and said, I love you. I can recognize that in any language. Finally, seeing I understood, she drifted into a deep, peaceful sleep that lasted for hours. When she awoke, she was back to reality, an old woman weakened by non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and chemotherapy. Gone were the angels and the memories of a life full of possibilities. Tears filled my eyes as I bathed her and prepared for the day ahead. Reality, who needs it, I said softly, and look forward to the evening to come. Unless your loved ones are combative or in danger to themselves or others, it's best to go with them wherever their memories take them. Their sense of time and place is as real to them as yours is to you. In trying to convince them otherwise just adds to your stress and theirs. And who knows, you may end up with a talent you always wish you had. Caregiver, You Are Not Alone. Copyright 2018 by Bobby Carducci. To order a copy, go to sandhbooks.com. To order a personalized signed copy, send an email to info at bobbycarducci.com www.bobbycarducci.com